Glad you could join me for this week's New Testament devotion. Today we're in just three verses, 1 John chapter 2, verses 12 to 14. Let me go ahead and read those. I am writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you, children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the evil one. Okay, let's first talk about this language of writing to little children, fathers, and young men. The first thing to note is you should not think of this as somehow excluding women. This is a generic form of the masculine, so he is speaking to men and women when he says this. That's more obvious with little children, but fathers and young men, he's referring to two different kinds of groups here. Little children is actually a reference to all Christians. That's not surprising since we're so familiar with the language of being the children of God. Those who are in Christ are adopted sons and daughters of God. So that's a common moniker in the New Testament. However, fathers and young men are not common terms in the New Testament. So what does he mean? Fathers is not a reference to those who have children. Rather, it's a reference to those who are older Christians, who have been Christians for a long time and have matured quite a bit in their faith. Whereas young men is a reference to those who are newer in the faith and who are maturing, yes, but they have a long way to go before they would be considered like elders in the church or respected church leaders. Now that we have that figured out, let's go ahead and take a closer look. Verse 12 says, I am writing to you little children because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. So first he's referencing the little children, referring to, of course, all Christians, all of us are children of God that are in Christ. And so he says, our sins are forgiven for his name's sake. This reminds me of verse 9 of chapter 1. If you remember what I was talking about back in that video, it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you remember what I said, God is the one who is faithful. God is the one who is utterly dependable and is the reason why we are forgiven. We should not think that somehow my forgiveness rests upon my faithfulness. No, it rests upon God's faithfulness, who is utterly faithful. It means he's utterly dependable. And in the same way, our sins are forgiven for his name's sake, not for our name's sake, but based on Christ's character. And his character alone is why our sins are forgiven. There are also some Old Testament passages that use this very language. Psalm 23, 3 says, He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Psalm 79, 9 says, Help us, O God, of our salvation. For the glory of your name, deliver us and atone for our sins for your name's sake. And finally, Isaiah 43, 25 says, I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. In verse 13, John writes, I am writing to you fathers because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you young men because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you children because you know the father. So John here in verse 13, once again, references all three groups. But if you remember, it's just actually two groups. The reference to children here is referring to all of them. But the reference to fathers is referring to the mature Christians and to the young men, to those who are maturing but are more young in the faith. To the fathers, he says, because you know him who is from the beginning. That language reminds me of the prologue of his gospel where he says, in the beginning was the word, referencing Christ. And the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. So he was in the beginning of creation with the father. So the language is very exalting of Christ. And then he says, I'm writing to you young men because you have overcome the evil one. The evil one, of course, being a reference to Satan. He says, you have overcome the evil one. So we are victorious in Christ. And then he says, I write to you children because you know the father. Of course, all of us know the father. In verse 14, he says the same thing about the fathers. He says, I write to you fathers because you know him who is from the beginning. It's important to know that this is not the same kind of language of knowing the father from the previous verse, how we just, we're all Christians. And we all know the father. I really think he's referring to a deeper knowledge of God. For those who are mature in their faith, of course, our knowledge in God grows. When I was a little kid, I saw a preacher on TV who was an old man uh, with gray hair, and he had a white robe on, and I asked my mom, is that God? I had this very low concept of God at the time, and I remember her very clearly laughing at that. Uh, my own son, Jasper, was blown away last week when he asked, can God lift a house? And I was like, yeah, he can lift a house. He was just like, 
wow, are you serious? But as I've grown in my faith, and someday my son will as well, when we speak of knowing God, it's a deeper knowledge of God. To close out, he says, I write to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the evil one. So once again, the language of being victorious over the evil one and being strong in the faith. But he also says, and the word of God abides in you. So he's saying that those who are maturing in their faith, they know God's word and they use it. And I hope this is an encouragement to my students because a lot of you would be described, I think, as the young men um, and young women in the faith who are maturing in Christ. And let it be said about you that the word of God abides in you and you recognize that you are victorious through Christ. I hope that encourages you this week. Let me go ahead and close this in prayer. Heavenly Father, I do pray for the young men and young women who are watching this right now. Lord, I pray that the word of God would abide in them, that they would know your word and apply it to their life. I pray that they would mature in their faith even this week as they are home, that they will take that time to invest in the word of God and that they will invest in praying. And we give you all the glory for the work you do in our lives this week. We love you and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all have a good week.